Hello, my name is Oliver Gottschalk from HEC School of Management in Paris. Um, I'm here at Super Richard International in Berlin 2016. It's a great pleasure to be um, chatting with uh, Chris Wedding about um, some of the activities and recent trends in the renewable energy space. Chris, your fund is actively uh, involved in one of the most exciting areas out there. There's very few doubts that long-term renewable energy is a phenomenal space, very exciting opportunities, but it's also extremely volatile because of a number of things going on in the overall energy market. What does the, the recent oil price shift do to your business and how you think about investments? Well, I can, I can comment mostly on the, the U.S. market where most of our mm -hmm. team is, is based. Um, it, it's, it's easy to, to, to think there's a correlation between low oil prices and, say, solar power, mm -hmm. wind power, and so forth. But at least in the U.S., you know, oil is not used for producing electricity. Mm -hmm. So in, in the private markets, uh, there's really no correlation. Uh, now, there, in, the, in the public equities market, there is a confusion, let's say, mm -hmm. uh, about the, the link between low oil and, say, solar stocks, not may, maybe taking a bit of a, a, bit mm -hmm. of a hit. Mm -hmm. The type of investments you do, and how much are they invested, uh, influenced at all by the very short-term volatility in the market? Because fundamentally, I mean, you're probably making bets on the very long-term trends in this area. Yeah, that's right. Um, the, the, the investors in solar or wind or storage projects in the U.S., they're, they're typically thinking about often a 20-year horizon. If they're a fund, certainly they're, they're, they're limited, but you know, call it a 10-year you know, perhaps and selling out to a lower, a lower cost of capital. Mm -hmm. But that's right, they're certainly thinking about, about longer term than a couple of years of, of volatility. Would you go so far as to say this volatility you see in oil prices right now actually creates good opportunities for you because people may not have the uh, ability or the skills to see this long term and actually creates good investment opportunities for you to get in at prices that you could not have seen two years ago? I think in general for, for the U.S. market, uh, th there is, there is uh, a great deal more capital chasing mm -hmm. uh, solar and wind projects. Yep. Um, partly it's just a, it's a, it's a yield-hungry environment, whereas can you get fairly low risk, good returns of, of infrastructure basically. Mm -hmm. um, so I think, I think in general, um, I, I, I kind of wish it were the case yep. that uh, the, the low oil prices scared more capital away, yep. so there were, were kind of better buying opportunities. But, uh, but I think it's, tr it's better for the industry. Mm -hmm. That's not the case this, uh, right now. So capital, in a sense, is smarter than you know, the, the headline figures uh, would, would suggest that you read in the news. But that's very, think, very interesting. I think some capital is. I think, I think there still is some overhang from the you know, clean tech investments, VC investments, really, the late 2000s, which mm -hmm. didn't do so well. Not the right, not the right fit. Mm -hmm. um, uh, or the overhang of some, maybe some retroactive policies, policy changes in Spain, for example. Mm -hmm. But really, that's that's a, a uh, that's kind of the past. I think. I think that the, the kind of looking forward, uh, at least in the U.S., a lot of our projects they have you know, 10, 15, 20 year power purchase agreements. Really, kind of predictable revenue, predictable uh, expenses. Mm -hmm. So the, you're saying that basically, I, I hear from this the short term volatility and commodity prices are not so so relevant for you. Um, the other big driver, of course, is regulation, because that to some extent drives lots of the profitability of those projects. Is this also just noise and, and uh, fluctuating in the short term, or, or is this a key thing for you or other investors to watch? Yeah, I mean, look, no doubt the, the, the renewable industry is, is new relative to the fossil fuel or nuclear industry. Yep. I think as such, there, there, there's, there, there still are subsidies that play a role. Mm -hmm. I think the subsidy discussion gets way too much uh, attention mm -hmm. for renewables. Uh, while, while they make headlines, yep. um, the, the reality is if you look at the you know, International Energy Agency's uh, data, the conventional energy industries get about four times the subsidies as renewables get. Mm -hmm. Now there's, there's certainly more power in those conventional sectors, but even normalized by megawatt, yep. it's more or less, more or less uh, equal. Mm -hmm. um, and, and the fossil fuel industry is you know, decades old versus say a decade perhaps for, for renewables. So I think the most governments say this matters for a variety of reasons, mm -hmm. looking to the future, not subsidizing the past, as Obama recently said. Yep. Um, uh, but, but, but all that said, the, the subsidies are falling. Mm -hmm. um, and in our state, where most of our team is located, in North Carolina, the second biggest uh, state for solar, mm -hmm. a big state subsidy went away, yet the megawatts and the billions of dollars invested in the state are going, are going up. Interesting, yeah. interesting. Well, I mean, it's, it's, it's surprising just to, to hear this because, I mean, if you put this into perspective, just the headline figures, you know, 7.4 billion that Obama wants to put in there in terms of subsidies, that seems like a gigantic number that's definitely going to drive shift demands, change that landscape. Um, you believe this is more, 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 more short-term play or what, what would you recommend investors take advantage of these things? Yeah, so I think, I think it's easy when, when investors hear the word clean tech or clean yeah. energy to think about a, a venture capital investment, mm -hmm. a, a technology risk basically. 
when, if you look at the, say, $400 billion invested in clean energy uh, mm -hmm. last year, mm -hmm. maybe four or five billion was, was on the VC side. It's really more M&A um, or, or, or project mm -hmm. uh, finance. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, so there's really not much uh, technology risk here. And, and the, the Obama budget talking about these, you know, doubling the budget yep. for, for clean energy, that's really for R&D. And so look, there's a role for R&D, for sure. Well, I, I'm, I love shiny objects, but I'm not distracted by shiny objects. Mm -hmm. Really the issue here is to scale existing, bankable, you know, kind of tier one, as they say, uh, proven uh, mm -hmm. technologies. And really the, the, the budget is, is more of a wish list. I don't think that's going to get passed through a Republican Congress. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm happy to see it as a, as a direction, but yep. uh, I, think, I think it's more of a, a statement versus what's going to happen. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Well, if you look at the landscape right now, if you look at investors interested in taking advantage of this, which would be the key areas that you would recommend that, that are interesting right now in the next 12 months for, for investment opportunities? Yeah, so, so I think you know, being here uh, in, in Berlin, a lot of capital is ha if they're thinking about renewables, has focused traditionally on, on Europe. Mm -hmm. There really is not a lot of projected growth for renewables uh, in, 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 in the EU. Um, if you look at places like America, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a bigger market, but um, you know, something like four or five X growth in the next four to five years, 50% mm -hmm. um, compound annual growth in the last mm -hmm. you know, 10 years, uh, and something like $70 billion to be invested in solar and, and storage, uh, sorry, solar and wind mm -hmm. projects in the, next, in the next five years. So a lot of opportunity in the U.S. for sure. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we, we look at, at, at markets like, like Japan. I mean, look, the, the, the feed-in tariff has, the, the rate has gone yeah. down, but there's still very attractive projects to be done there. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, if, you, if you're looking for you know, higher returns, you can go to emerging markets. There's a lot of opportunity in places like, mm -hmm. like Latin America, like, like Asia. Mm -hmm. You do take some more risk, for sure, um, uh, but uh, if you have experience there, know how to manage those risks, that can be a good play on the fundamentals uh, of energy as well. Mm -hmm. We talk about oil prices overall, we talk about regulation. The other key driver of the space is obviously technology. Um, of course, uh, you, you mentioned the, the R&D efforts going into the, to, to get the next uh, technological breakthrough. Um, what are, how much will this impact real world existing investment opportunities in the last, in the last couple of years? Is it just a, a bet long term in the future or do you see substantial shifts coming through possible technological revolution there? I mean, I hope there are great game changing technologies that come into play for, mm -hmm. especially for things like energy storage. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think that th there's actually a big debate, I, th I think, in the industry between groups like, let's say, the you know, Bill Gates, Mark Zuckerberg led Breakthrough Energy Coalition yep. committing yep. 20 some billion dollars to clean energy R&D mm -hmm. basically. Mm -hmm versus those like, say, Goldman Sachs, who would say, look, it's about scaling existing proven technologies. Yep. Um, uh, I think in something like energy storage, which is projected to grow you know, $40 billion in the next 10 years or mm -hmm. so, and it, just in the US, mm -hmm. I mean, there are 70 different you know, uh, battery chemistries. That's exciting, yeah. it's confusing, yeah. uh, but, but the reality is that, at least for the near term, it's, it's just lithium ion, right? It, the question is, how far can, can cost fall? Mm -hmm. Something like 50% over the next, the next four years. What business models lead to lower cost of capital or removing the, the kind of first uh, CapEx plug for, for those that have the, 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 the batteries on, uh, on site. Yeah. So it's really, I think less about, I like, and I'm, I'm a huge fan certainly of, of technological uh, mm -hmm. uh, improvement, but really our business, and I think those, of, uh, those, those LPs, GPs here at this conference, mm -hmm. should be thinking more about project finance and, and business model uh, innovation. Mm -hmm. Very interesting. Thank you so much. This has been the most exciting and uh, informational, very, very uh, active space that we can need to watch. And thanks for your insights.